Hey guys, I'm T, and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. As we continue on, here's another fanny square bralette creation. There's not too much to say about this one, other than it's cute, quick to make, and it might just be my new favorite bralette design. And if this is your new favorite, be sure to let me know in the comments below. We can vibe out together, and while you're down there, be sure to give this video a like. It helps YouTube know you like it so other people can see the video, and it helps me keep making these tutorials for years to come because we got more coming. Now it's time to get on with the show, so without further ado. For this project, any category for yarn will work, but I used a total of 150 grams of yarn, and that's 200 yards if you're stateside. And the individual measurements will be on the screen. As the tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And for this pattern giveaway, this week's curveball. What's your favorite holiday? For me, it's gotta be Christmas. I love good food and family. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet, double crochet, and treble crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 5mm hook, and we're all going to start by making a chain that reaches from our underarm down to where we want the bottom of this top to be, keeping in mind that we will have a 3 inch gap for our granny squares that reaches right underneath our bust. So I'm going to make a chain that is only 1 inch or 3 centimeters, and that's going to be a chain of 6. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain to a chain of one. That chain is our turning chain that doesn't count as a stitch. And from here, we're going to single crochet into that chain that we blocked off with a second chain from our hook. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. Let's do this again. Into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, Pull through two. Continue to put one single crochet, and I'll meet you back when we have one chain left so that we can increase. And now that we have just one chain left, into that last chain, we're going to be inserting two single crochets. So into that last chain, there is one, and then into that same last chain, there is two. Now the next row in a row sequence is a back loop slip stitch row. So chain one flip our work, and then we're going to insert a hook into that first available stitches, back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. Into that next back loop, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything. I'll meet you guys back at the end of this row. And now that we're at the end, what we're going to do from here is chain one, Flip our work and then go into the next row in a row sequence, which is now a back loop single crochet. We're going to be alternating between those two rows. So, to do our first back loop single crochet, we're going to insert a hook into that first back loop and single crochet. Let's do this again. That next back loop and single crochet. Continue to put one back loop single crochet into every stitch, and I'll meet you back when we have just one left so that we can do an increase again. One back loop single crochet is now into every stitch. We have just one left, so let's do our increase. Into that next loop, one single crochet, and then two single crochets. And then just to get started on the next row is a back loop slip stitch row, so chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We're going to continue these two rows until this reaches the corner of our underarm. And I'll meet you guys back right after a slip stitch row. Alright, so I'm back with my underarm portion and I ended right after a slip stitch row. 
I have a total of about two inches or five centimeters and this is unstretched. And from here, we're gonna need to curve this up just a little bit more so that we have a seamless curve. So what we're going to do is do a chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop single crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one so that now we can do an increase of three. And now that we have our last stitch, we're going to do an increase of three into that last back loop. So insert your hook into that last back loop with one, with two, and then with three back loops and crochets into that same last stitch. And we're going to need to increase into our slip stitch rows as well. So start with a chain two and flip our work. We're going to insert our hook into the second chain from our hook. So the one that's nearest to our hook just counts as our turning chain. We're going to insert our hook into that second chain's back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. Let's do this again. Into that next back loop, insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything. Continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then our next row is going to be a repeat of our two. So one back loop single crochet into every stitch, increasing into the last, do a chain two, and then increasing into the slip stitch row. I'll meet you guys back right after a slip stitch row once in the stretches to the front of our body. Right, so I am officially finished with my entire underarm portion. I have a total of 15 rows. My width is now about three and a half inches or 19 centimeters. We should have all ended right after a single crochet row, and now we're going to start working on our scoop. So we're going to do our scoop in two sections until we reach the middle. The first half is going to be doing decreases into every row, so let's get that started. Since we're along the top, we're going to chain one, flip our work. I'm going to insert our hook into that first stitch's back loop, yarn over, pull through, also into that next stitch's back loop, yarn over, and then here we should have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through everything. That's how we do our decrease of two back loop slip stitches. Now from here, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and we reach the end of the row to a chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop single crochet into every stitch until there's just two left. And I'll meet you guys back so we can do a decrease of two singles. Right, so we have made our way all the way up, putting one back loop single crochet into every stitch. Into the last two, let's do our decrease. Insert your hook into that second to last back loop, yarn over, pull through, then also into that last back loop, yarn over, and pull through. We should have three loops on our hook, so from here, yarn over and pull through all three. Now since we're here, we might as well get started on the next row, which is going to be a decrease of two back loop slip stitches, just like how we started this section off. So chain one, and flip your work. Insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through, also into that next stitch's back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. And then put one back loop slip stitch to every stitch. We're going to continue to repeat these two rows until this reaches about mid breast. And I'll meet you guys back right after a single crochet row. Alright, so the first half of our scoop is all finished. We now have a total of 23 rows for about 5 inches or 13 centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to continue with the rest of our scoop until we reach the middle of our chest. So what we're going to do from here is only do decreases into our single crochet rows. But since we ended on a single crochet, we're going to need to do a slip stitch row with no increases or decreases. So chain one, flip your work. Put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, do a chain one, flip your work, leave the last two so that we can decrease again, and then we'll move on from there. So we've made our way all the way up, and we left our last two stitches. To do our decrease, we're going to insert our hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, into that last back loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. Now remember we're not decreasing into our slip stitch rows, so just chain one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now we're going to keep repeating these two rows until this can stretch over to the middle of our chest, and I'll meet you guys back right after a single crochet row. 
right, so we have made our way all the way down to the middle of our chest. We now have a total of 31 rows, and this is roughly six and a half inches or 16 centimeters unstretched. And now we're gonna do our middle row, and it's just gonna be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases or decreases. So, chain one, flip your work, and make your way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We reach the end, do a chain one, flip your work, and put one back loop single crochet into every stitch, leaving the last stitch that we have so that we can now do an increase as we're going to start working on the other side of our next scoop. Alright, so we have just finished our middle row and we have made our way all the way up with our back loop single crochets, and now we're going to increase into that last stitch. So insert your hook into that last back loop with one, and then with two single crochets. And from here, all we're going to do is basically just mirror everything that we have here on the other side. But instead of increases, we're going to do decreases. And instead of decreases, we're going to do increases. So to do the first portion of our scoop, we're only going to be increasing into our single crochet rows. Since we just finished one up, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then just put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one, one back loop single crochet into every stitch and increase into that last. And we're going to keep repeating these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as the first half of our scoop right here because we need it to match. We'll meet you guys back when we have the same amount of rows all finished up. All right, so the first half of my increased side of my scoop is all finished up. And now it's about seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. And now we're going to need to do the other half of our scoop where we get a little bit taller. So since we all should have ended right after a back loop slip stitch row, we're going to chain one and flip our work. We're going to put one back loop single crochet to every stitch, making our way all the way up, leaving the last one so that we can increase again. All right, so we have left our last stitch, and now we're going to do an increase. So just like all the other increases, we're going to insert two single crochets into that last back loop. So there's one, and then there's two. Now, since we're doing this portion, we did do a decrease into every row, so we need to increase into our slip stitch row as well. Now, we're going to do that is chain two and flip our work. And into the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So, skipping that first chain, inserting into the second, we're going to insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. Let's do this again into that next back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. And that's it. We're going to keep repeating these two rows with decreases along the top until we have the same amount of rows as this portion right here. And then after that, I will meet you back so that we can do the underarm. I have just finished up going in with the rest of my scoop. And now we're going to work on our underarm. This is roughly 9 inches or 23 centimeters now. And from here, we're going to put one back loop single crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three so that we can do a decrease of three together. Right, so we have single crocheted all the way up, leaving our last three stitches, and we're going to do a decrease. So insert your hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, second to last back loop, pull through, and last back loop, pull through. Should have four loops on our hook, so from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, and we do need to start with a decrease for our slip stitch row as well, so chain one, and flip your work. Insert your hook into that first stitches back loop, yarn over, pull through, and into that next stitch is back loop, yarn over, and pull through all three loops that's on our hook. And that's it. Go ahead and keep repeating these two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows where we did an increase of three and increase into the slip stitch rows. Once we have those rows, I'll meet you back so we can close off our front panel. All right, so we are almost done with the front panel. We just need to close this off with the rest of our underarm just about 10 inches or 25 centimeters and then from here we're going to need to decrease only into the single crochet rows so since my next row is a slip stitch row just do a chain one fill up our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch at the end of the row chain one flip your work put one back loop single crochet into every stitch and leave the last two all right we have left the last two stitches so let's do our decrease into that second to last back loop Pull through into that last back loop, pull through and pull through all three. Chain one, 
flip your work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now keep repeating those two rows until we have the same amount of rows as our underarm portion right over here and then do a chain up at one and Alrighty, so our front panel is all finished and it is a total of about 12 inches or 30 centimeters all unstretched. From here, before we get started with anything else, we're going to need a single crochet along the bottom. So start by inserting your hook into the bottom corner stitch, inserting your yarn onto your hook, pull through and do a chain up one to secure. And now here we're going to put one single crochet into every side row. So into this first side row, which is actually where our chain of one is in, we're going to insert your hook into there with one single crochet. Let's do the next one. This is my next side slip stitch row. So I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop. And then single crochet. Let's do just one more set. This is my next side row, which is a side single. So insert. And then single crochet. And then let's do one more side slip stitch row. Insert into that top loop. And single crochet. Keep doing this, making our way all the way down. Do a chain up one and cut. Alright, so we are all finished with our front panel, and we're actually now going to get started on our granny squares. So I'm going to put this away for now. And I'm going to start by grabbing the base color of my granny square. And this is here as an example. So we're going to get started on the middle section first. Go ahead and make a slip knot. Grab our same 5mm hook, and we're all going to start by making a chain of 4. Once we have our chain, we're going to slip stitch into that first chain. So insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything. We have now just made a loop for ourselves, and now we're going to make some chain spaces. So start with a chain of 3. This counts as a double crochet. When we have that, we're going to Make an extra chain, and that counts as a chain. We should have a total of four chains. From here, we're going to yarn over, preparing for a double crochet. We're going to insert our hook into the middle of that circle that we just made with a double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And we've just made our first chain space. Let's do another one. Chain one, yarn over, into that middle circle. There's our next double crochet. We now have two chain spaces. Let's do just one more. Chain one, yarn over. Into the middle of our circle, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Now all together we should have one, two, three chain spaces, and we want to have a total of 12. So we're going to continue with our chain one and double crochet until we have a total of 11. And then I'll meet you guys back to show you how we're going to make our last one. Alright, so I'm back. I now have 11 chain spaces. Let's count those out really quick. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. To make our 12, all we're going to do is chain 1. And then into that chain 3 that we made when we started this off, we're going to slip stitch into that third. So count of 1, count of 2, and 3. Insert your hook into that third chain, forming our last chain space. Yarn over, pull through, and then cut. And go ahead and grab your next yarn color. Now that we have the base of our granny square all finished up, we're now going to start working on the petals. So all we're going to do is insert our hook into any one of these chain spaces. It doesn't matter which one. So insert, insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and we're all going to start with a chain of three that secures it into our spot and gives us some height. And now we're going to start working on a modified puff stitch, so let's get that started. We're going to yarn over, and then into that same chain space that our chain three is in, we are going to insert our hook, yarn over, and pull through. We should have three loops on our hook, and from here we're actually going to pull up nice and tall so that we get the same height as our chain three, and then we're going to yarn over, pull through two. We should have two loops on our hook. And we're going to be doing one more for this first modified puff stitch. So yarn over into that same chain space, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, pull up nice and tall again, should have four loops, 
We're going to yarn over and pull through two. And we now have three loops. We're now going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops, finishing up our first modified puff stitch. And we're going to need to do two more to form one side, so let's do the next. To work our way over to the next chain space, we're going to chain two. Into that next chain space that we have, we're going to do our next modified puff stitch. So yarn over and insert your hook into that next chain space. Yarn over, pull through. Pull up nice and tall, yarn over, pull through two. Should have two loops on our hook. Let's do this again. Yarn over into that same chain space. Pull through, pull up nice and tall, yarn over, pull through two. We should now have three loops on our hook and we're actually going to be doing another yarn over so that we get the same puffiness as this first puff stitch. Let's do this again. Yarn over and into that same chain space. Insert pull through. Pull up nice and tall. Yarn over. Pull through two. And we should all now have four loops on our hook. So yarn over and pull through all four. That is our second puff stitch. Let's do the next one together before we do our corner. Chain two. And yarn over into that next chain space insert your hook pull through pull tall pull through two yarn over into that same chain space pull through pull tall pull through two should have three loops on our hook at this point we have one more left to do so yarn over into that chain space pull through pull up pull through two and now we have four loops so yarn over and pull through all four of those loops once we have our three puff stitches, we now need to start working on our corner. So chain two, and we're going to prepare for a treble crochet. And all that is, is a yarn over of two. We're next going to insert our hook into the top of that double crochet stitch, not into the chain space. So go ahead and insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. Now we have one side of our corner. Let's get started on the other side. So chain two. And then from here, we're going to do another set of three modified puff stitches into the next three chain spaces. And now that we have one, two, three modified puff stitches, we're ready to get started on the corner. So do a chain two and start with a treble crochet. So yarn over twice. Into the next stitch on top of the double crochet from our previous row. Insert your hook into there. Pull through, yarn over, pull through two, two, and two. Now let's get started on the other side, or side number three. So chain two into that next chain space, do a puff. Put one puff stitch into each of the next three stitches. All right, so we are almost finished up with our side number three. We just need to do our corner, so let's do that together. Chain two, yarn over twice, into the top of that double crochet stitch, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. And now to get started on the last side that we have, chain two, and then put one modified puff stitch into each of the next stitches. We should have three left. I'll meet you guys back so we can do our last corner together. All right, so our side number four is almost all finished. We have one, two, three modified puff stitches that we just did, and now we just have to do our corner. So chain two, just like before, yarn over twice. Into the next double crochet stitch, not the next chain space. Pull through, pull through two, two, two. And then from here, we're gonna chain two and slip stitch into the third chain. So we started off this row with a chain three, so we're gonna count up one, two, three, insert your hook into that third chain with a slip stitch. And that's that. Once we have that, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, and now that we know how to do our granny squares, we're going to need to make enough so that it can wrap around our chest. So these granny squares are about three inches by three inches, and I need a total of about 23 inches. So I made a total of eight rows. If you're in between measurements like me, I'd suggest to take away a granny square because you will have a little bit of stretch as well. Once we have that, then go ahead and get this all seamed together.
So I have all of my granny squares right here. I have left the last two so that we can seam them together. So the first thing that we're going to do is making sure that our granny squares are flipped right side up. We're actually going to sandwich them right side towards each other, making sure that we're looking at the back for both granny squares. Once we have that, we're going to insert our hook into that corner stitch, which is our treble crochet stitch, into the front granny square, then into that same treble crochet stitch, into the back granny square, insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and from here we're going to do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to do a single crochet seam. So into that next stitch, it should be a chain since we have a chain two in between each of our stitches. So into that next chain, go ahead and insert your hook. And then also into the back panel, into that same next chain, insert your hook into there. And from here, I'm also going to be showing you guys how we're going to be weaving at our ends at the same time because granny squares can't be a pain in the butt because of all the tail ends. So what we're going to do is grab our tail end. And then all we're going to do is just place it on top of the loop that we just inserted our hook into. And then we're going to single crochet per usual. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now our tail end is in between that single crochet that we just did. So we don't have to seam it in later. Let's do this again. We should have one more chain right next to our puff stitch. So insert your hook into that next stitch, into the front panel. Do the same stitch into the back panel. Placing your tail end on top of your hook and then single crochet. Now our next stitch is our puff stitch and it's going to be done the same way, but we're going to do it together anyways. So insert your hook into that next stitch into the front panel and then the same next stitch into the back panel, placing the tail end on top of your hook and then single crochet. And that's about it. Go ahead and continue to do this until we make our way all the way down to our treble crochet stitch on the next corner, do a chain of one cut, and then we're going to seam everything together, forming a circle, and I'll meet you guys back. So now that all of our granny squares are seamed together, forming a circle, we're now going to single crochet along the top, and then we can attach the cuffs to the granny squares. So all we're gonna do is insert our hook into any one of the stitches along one side of our granny square, top or bottom, doesn't matter. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, Pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Then from here, all we're gonna do is just single crochet all the way around, slip stitch into that chain one space, and then do a chain up of one and cut. So let's just do the first few. Into that first stitch, since I inserted my hook into this corner, all I'm gonna do is insert, single, next stitch, insert, single let's just do one more insert and then single just make your way all the way across and i'll meet you guys back and a really quick tip is along each of the sides of our granny squares we should have 13 stitches so keeping that in mind i'll meet you guys back once this is all done all right so i am back and i have just finished up seam crocheting along the edge of my granny squares now what we're going to do from here is seam the two together and a really quick tip that i have for you guys is if you care I have actually aligned my middle row with the stitch that I have in between my set of granny squares. It doesn't matter which set, but I have aligned this. And then from here, I've counted out the amount of stitches that I have until the edge. And then from that middle stitch, I've counted out the amount of stitches and then inserted my stitch marker just because I want this to line up. If you guys don't want to, if you guys want a different look, go ahead and place it wherever you guys need to place it. But we're now ready to seam it, and the first thing we're going to have to make sure is that our work is flipped right side up for both pieces. So, the ribbing is faced up for our front panel, and all of the seams for the granny squares are along the inside. From here, we're going to place the front panel on top of the granny square portion, and then we can insert our hook into whatever stitches we need. So, I'm going to insert my hook into this stitch, and also into the first stitch into the front panel. And from here, we're going to single crochet them together. So start by inserting your hook, yarn over, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now let's do the first seam. It's gonna be done the same way that we have seen the granny squares. So insert your hook into that first stitch into the front panel, and then into the first stitch into the back panel. You're going to single crochet. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch, 
into the front panel and next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook and single crochet. Now we're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way down until we don't have any more front panel loops left to go into. Then I'll meet you guys back. So we have just seamed our front panel to our granny squares. And now we're going to start working on the back. The first thing that we're going to have to do is make a chain. The same amount of chains that we made when we first started off our front panel and this will be worked off separately. So since I made a chain of six, I'm going to make another chain six. And now that we have our chain, we're going to chain one into that chain that we blocked off. We're going to single crochet and then put one single crochet into every chain. And then from here, we're going to alternate between a back loop slip stitch row and back loop single crochet row with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of stitches that we have along the back side of our granny square. So go ahead and get all of that done and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can seam it to the granny square and then seam the sides. All right, so now that we have our single crochet and slip stitches, we're now going to single crochet along the bottom and then we can seam it to the granny squares. So this is going to be done the same way that we did the front panel, so let's just do the first one. Start with the chain one and then we're going to insert our hook into this first row's side loop. So my first row is a single crochet, I'm going to find that side loop with one single crochet. My next side row is a slip stitch, so insert with another single crochet. And then we're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way down. Alright, so we have just finished up single crocheting along the bottom of our back panel and now we're ready to seam it to the granny squares. So what we're going to do is make sure that our granny squares is flipped right side out and right side up and we're looking at the back. Next, I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch that I have that's right next to the front panel into the granny square section. So this is my next stitch, then yarn over, pull through everything, and then now we're going to single crochet just like how we did the front. So just to do the first one, we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch into the front panel, and then into the first stitch into the back panel, and then single crochet. And that is it. Keep doing this, making our way all the way down. We don't have any more stitches left, so chain up one and cut. All right, so now that our back is all seamed up, we're now ready to seam the sides. So let's just do the first side together. We're going to make sure that our work is slipped right side out, and we're going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of the front panel and corner stitch of the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook and pull through everything to secure. Do a chain up of one, and now this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so let's get this started. Into the first stitch into the front panel, we're going to be inserting our hook only in through that front loop. So insert your hook into there. And then into the back panel, insert your hook. And then into the back panel, insert your hook only into that back loop. So insert. And from here, we should have three loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do the next one. Into that next stitch, insert into that front loop. And then into the back panel, insert only into that back loop. Yarn over and pull through everything. Keep doing this until we don't have any more stitches left. Do a chain up one and cut, and then do the same thing that we did here on the other side. All right, so our front and our back panel is all seamed together. And what we're going to do from here is work on our strap. So first of all, taking a look at the back, what we're going to do is find the middle side row. And from there, I'm going to insert my hook into that side row, and then we're going to single crochet all the way around until we reach this peak. So insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and then we're just going to do the first few single crochets with each other, which is one single crochet into every side row that we have. So my first side row that I have right here is a side slip stitch. If yours is a single crochet, that's fine. Go ahead and insert your hook into that top loop with one single crochet, and then into my next row, which is a side single, I'm going to insert with another single crochet. So keep doing this, making our way all the way up and around. I'll meet you guys back right at this point. All right, so we have just made our way all the way up to this point, and now we're going to make the chain for our strap. But right before we do that, we're going to need to know where we want to insert our chain. 
So go ahead and flip your work over and then insert your stitch marker into any stitch that you want your strap to connect into. I've inserted mine into the ninth stitch from where I started these single crochets. And this is just about two inches or five centimeters. So once we have that, you're going to make a chain that reaches up and over our shoulder and reaches this point. So I've already measured mine out. Mine's going to be a chain of nine inches or 23 centimeters. And that's a chain of 40. All right, so now that I have my chain, I'm now going to slip stitch it into that stitch marker stitch. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, do a chain of one and cut. And then we're going to do the same thing that we just did here on the other side. So insert your hook into that same stitch, single crochet around, make a chain and connect it into the same stitch. Then I'll meet you guys back. Right, so both of our straps are all done and now we need to clean up the middle. It's going to be done pretty much the same way. So go ahead and flip your work over. Insert your hook into any one of these side rows. It really doesn't matter which one. And all we're going to do is insert our yarn onto your hook. Pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And then we're just going to single crochet, making our way all the way up. Going up our chain, down the front. Once we reach the front, it's going to be the same. Put one single crochet into every side row and all the way back up and around. Slip stitch into this chain one space once we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Do a chain of a one and cut. Let me you guys back so we can get started on the bottom band. Right, our straps are all done and now we're going to single crochet along the bottom right before we get started on the length of our band. So we're going to insert our hook into any one of these stitches. It doesn't matter which one. Insert your yarn onto your hook. Pull through. Do the chain up one to secure and then just single crochet all the way around. Meet you guys back so we have this row all finished up. Alright, so I've just single crocheted along the entirety of the bottom of my piece. And now I'm going to make a chain the height that I want my bottom band to be. I want it to be about 2 inches or 10 centimeters, so I'm going to make a chain of 10. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain. Do a chain 1. That counts as our turning chain, not as a stitch. And then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. Let's do that again. Insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over, and pull through everything. Now we're going to continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. And now that we've made our way all the way down with our slip stitches, we're going to slip stitch it into the base to connect this first row. So all we're going to do is insert a hook into that next stitch, yarn over, and pull through everything. Now to work our way up to the next row, we're going to slip stitch up the next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into everything. So insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop, yarn over, and pull through. Into the next one, insert your hook into that next back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. Continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And now that we put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, just to work our way up to the next row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. We're going to keep repeating those two rows until we don't have any more left. I'm going to meet you guys back so that we can seam it together. Okay, so we have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitches. We don't have any more stitches left, and we're now ready to seam our bottom band. So we're all going to make sure that our work is slipped right side out, and we are now going to place the two ends next to each other. We're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam. So start by inserting your hook into the corner stitch of the back panel since we're already in through the working yarn. From here, yarn over and pull through everything. Now let's do the first stitch. Into the first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook in through that front loop. And then into the first stitch into the back panel, insert in through that back loop. We should now have three loops on our hook, so yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Let's do the next one. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. Next stitch into the back panel, going in through that back loop. Insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything. So the same seam that we did for the sides. Go ahead and continue to do this since we don't have any more stitches left. And then do a chain up of one and cut. 
All right, our bottom band is all synced up. And the last thing that we're gonna have to do is work on our trim and that's going to be super duper easy. So all we're gonna do is insert our hook into any one of these stitches along the back, introduce our secondary color yarn onto your hook, fold through. Then all we're gonna do is just make our way all the way around, putting one single crochet into every stitch. And we're gonna be doing that for the sides as well. So go ahead and get all of this done and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so this is what we're looking like once we have finished up the trim. And now the last thing we're gonna have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. All of those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye!